Good morning. If you didn't feel a mild objection to the words of Jesus today after hearing this gospel, you haven't been listening. I am sure inside the church, these are kind and wonderful words. Outside the church, though I have hardly ever heard anybody say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Certainly it is not too easy to digest and practice. Today's readings challenge us to become holy as our God is holy. And this is very much associated with our London theme. Through the Eucharist, Christ is calling us to a holy life. Today's first reading teaches us that we should be holy because it is the command given to us by God through Moses. Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. It also shows us the way to share in God's holiness. Love your neighbor as yourself. The second reading, St. Paul gives us an additional reason to be holy. We are to keep our bodies and souls holy because we are the temples of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in us. In the Gospel passage, Jesus teaches us four ways to become holy as God is holy. The first way is to abstain from all forms of retaliation. The second way is to take the offense gracefully and love the offender. The third way is by unconditionally and wholeheartedly forgiving the offender. And the fourth way of becoming holy is to seal our determination to forgive our enemies by sincerely praying for them. Sometimes when we hear the word enemy, we think of another country waging war with us or people who might try to attack us with weapons such as terrorists. But enemies can also be even closer to us. An enemy can be someone who gossips about us or makes fun of us. An enemy can be a former friend or partner who has betrayed us. We all have many enemies in our lives. Gospel says, love your enemies. It is very easy for me to love all Japanese, Chinese, Russians, Indians, Europeans. They never meet me and never tread me on my corns. But it is my neighbors, those whom I love, I live and work, who are liable to injure me and thus become my enemies. Charity begins at home because it is here that it can and should be learned and practiced. Husband and wife must learn to understand and tolerate each other's imperfections and faults. If one offends the other, the offended one should not demand an apology, but should show forgiveness before the other has humbly to apologize. No two persons in the world, not even identical twins, can agree on all things. So it is vain and unrealistic to expect even one's married partner to agree with one in all points. If there is peace and harmony between husband and wife, then the children will learn to be understanding and forgiving. Such a home will be a truly happy home, even if it has little of the world's riches. Today, the Lord wants us to be perfect, to live a holy life. If this was not possible, 
the Lord would have never said it. The life of Jesus himself was a proof for it. The call of the gospel to love our enemies is indeed a huge challenge. Let us pick up this challenge of the Lord and seek towards perfection and holiness. Whether we like it or not, as per experience, we like to return evil for evil. Mahatma Gandhi said that, if we take an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, then the world would be filled with blind and toothless people. We are called to holiness, which means change of heart. Our hatred heart need to become open and loving hearts. Our vengeful hearts need to become forgiving hearts. God loves all his children. Jesus died for all of humanity, including those who have wounded us. That is why he asks us to love our enemies. There is one whom God will not forgive. It is very difficult to love our enemies. Here are some ideas which can help. Your wound may have an impact on your life, and you might carry it for a while. After the resurrection, Jesus still carried his wounds. He showed them to Thomas. So talk to Jesus about the, your wounds. Ask God for the desire to forgive the other person. It can take some time to want to forgive. Keep asking God for this desire. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Withholding forgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It will only harm you. Remember that you are also a sinner and you have hurt others. Deliberate hatred is contrary to charity. Hatred of the neighbor is a sin when one deliberately wishes him evil. God loves the person who wronged me just as he loves me. This is another reason I must pray for my enemies. And Jesus gives us the example of praying for his enemies from the cross. As our London theme suggests, fervently receiving Holy Communion is the key and the shortcut to holiness. Therefore, here are some practical suggestions on how we can improve our reception of Eucharist, which helps us to a holy life. First, faith. We must strengthen our faith in the reality of Jesus truly present in the Eucharist. If we do not cultivate our faith in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, then it is possible to eventually lose our faith altogether. Second, purity through confession. Always receive Eucharist while in the stage of grace. God and sin cannot dwell in communion together. If we are conscious in grave sin, make a good confession before receiving Holy Communion. Third, personal conversion. All of us are in dire need of conversion. Every time we receive Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, we can really receive a spiritual heart transplant. May every reception of Holy Communion transform our hearts into a sacred heart of Jesus. <coughs> Fourth, receive the Eucharist reverently. Approach as if you are approaching God. Receive if you are receiving God. Consume as if you are consuming God. And finally, thanksgiving. That is the time in which we should spend some quality time in thanksgiving after we receive the Eucharistic Lord. We have the creator of the entire universe within the very depth of our heart, mind, and soul. 
we can simply close our eyes and tell Jesus that we love him. Let us pursue holiness by receiving Jesus in the Eucharist with fervor, devotion, and love. Lord Jesus Christ, fill our hearts with your love so that we can spread this love throughout the world. Amen.